This is the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate. And normally we don't do unboxings here on the channel, but this packaging is looking pretty sweet to not do one. So I'm gonna crack it open, take a look, try the phone out for a week and give you guys my thoughts. Let's jump right in. This box looks insane, kind of like a spaceship. And honestly, it kind of needs to be because this is the one that Asus goes all out on. Now I can feel with the texture on this box that it is made out of recycled material, which makes sense because a lot of companies are doing that nowadays. But uh, that means I can throw this in a patch of grass and it'll be part of it at some point. That's how that works, right? Compost. <laughs> I, I know my nature. <laughs> Judging by the fact that this top part's pretty heavy, this is probably the phone itself. So I'm gonna set that off to the side first because I wanna see the rest of it, save the surprise for last. You have a charging brick here, which is 65 watts. This phone will charge really quick. Then we also have obviously a USB-C cable as well, nicely braided. And a whole top part here. What is that? What is this? Oh. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's a cooling fan. Oh, what? <laughs> are there buttons? Those are back buttons. Oh, those are really tactile. <laughs> this phone is nuts. I'm assuming this is also a carrying case. That would be correct. And I assume there's also, yes, a piece of Celica, which, uh... Wait, that's for me. Ah, you can eat this week. <laughs> We spare bread comes in this household. But of course, the story here is about the ROG phone itself. Oh wait, no, there's more than... Oh, this is not even documentation. There's a case in here. Wow, this case looks really neat as well. Take out our phone itself. Oh, that is meaty. But also, it kind of has to be because it's a gaming-oriented phone. You want maximum performance. And I'm gonna just say that right off the bat, there's probably insane cooling in here. And also, how does this attachment work? Put this in like this. I'm gonna. That sounded. Oh, there's an unlock button. I should have <laughs> used that. This is a meaty package. It's like a new favorite word. Meaty? Yeah. Or package? <laughs> <laughs> Those speakers were really good. I felt the bass on that one. <laughs> there's loading music? We're in the gamer zone now. So I'm not gonna set this up on camera. Give me a few days and we're gonna come back and give you more of my long-term impressions on this. Okay, I've had about a week with the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate. And let me tell you, between the striking looks, gorgeous display, and the sheer power of it all, this phone is absolutely nuts. These nuts, got them. <laughs> First off, I wanna talk about the design. It's definitely an acquired taste aimed at the sophisticated gamer with all these shapes and angles to it. But in all seriousness, the aesthetic is relatively clean, especially in this white colorway. Though in my opinion, it could use with a little less branding. The coolest thing on the back, however, is this cover display. Through the Armory Crate app that comes pre-installed, you can customize what it's showing to let you know things like battery percentage whenever you're getting a phone call, or even load it with custom images and effects. As someone that loves to put anime stuff anywhere and everywhere in my life, this is the ticket. Plus, the phone is pretty smart about turning it on only when you pick up the device, so it's not using up battery while it's in your pocket. Moving on to the side profile of the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, it looks chonky as fuck. But there are some good reasons for this. Not like, uh, not like me after I had one too many double cheeseburgers. There aren't too many good reasons for that, just a lot of shame. For one, it is a gaming phone, so of course it needs a gigantic battery. 6,000 milliamp hours divided up between two cells, which lets you charge at a total of 65 watts, getting you to 100% in less than 50 minutes. What's also neat is that the batteries are arranged around the SoC instead of directly on top of it, which allows the phone to manage thermals better on top of preserving the overall battery life. Secondly, this phone actually has ports. Asus is pretty good about this even on their Zenfone line, but the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate has a 2.0 USB-C port on the bottom, that's mainly for charging, a 3.2 USB-C on the side for our cooler attachment, and yes, there is also a 
headphone jack. This is especially useful if you're one of those people that play rhythm games and need that low latency. Hop on over to the front and the bezels are surprisingly thick for a flagship phone in 2023. While it's easy to write this off as a loss, honestly, I find it important on a gaming phone. It acts as a buffer so that your palms are less likely to register as a touch, which can be quite annoying in the heat of gameplay. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, Amber. Oh, I'm still dying. Oh God! I especially noticed this while using the included case, which has clever ergonomics that guide your grip when holding the phone in landscape. It's certainly no gamepad replacement, but goes a long way toward feeling comfortable and confident when playing on the go. I think the ASUS designers did a wonderful job with the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, but what's it actually like to use? Put simply, this phone is hella fast. With its Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 SoC and 16 gigs of RAM, you can throw everything and the kitchen sink at this phone and it'll take it no problem. It's especially helpful that inside the phone, ASUS put in a pair of graphite sheets and vapor chamber cooling to keep thermal throttling down to a minimum. However, beyond the raw performance, also key to this phone's snappy and fluid feel, especially in more general use, is the 165 hertz refresh rate on its large 6.8 inch AMOLED display. It's certainly overkill to run it at this setting all the time, but I never really want to turn it off because it actually makes the phone feel even faster. While I'm on the topic of the screen, it's also been wonderful for media consumption. The calibration leans a touch oversaturated in color, though it still looks pleasing in games and watching video. But back onto core performance, let's talk about this huge cooling apparatus, the Aeroactive Cooler 7. This monstrosity attaches via the USB-C port on the side and also with these two little bitty pogo pins. And the idea here is that it helps exhaust heat out the back. It also makes a cool sound too when you do it. it takes a little while, but kind of neat. <laughs> This isn't just by simply making contact with the glass on the back. The ROG Phone 7 Ultimate has a secret vent that opens up when the Aeroactive Cooler is attached to reveal a heatsink that's properly making contact with the internals of the phone to help dissipate more heat. It actually channels all the air in, which is really neat. If you're curious about what it looks like without the attachment on, you can manually open it via a maintenance menu in the settings. This is so you can clean it out if it gets dusty, but otherwise it's tucked away behind this motorized door and most people probably wouldn't even know it existed otherwise. Going back to the Aeroactive Cooler itself, it has some neat RGB lighting effects, programmable buttons to control stuff in game, as well as a bottom facing 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and pass through USB-C for power that's perfectly placed for landscape. It even has a built-in subwoofer to add some extra boom to those speakers if you need it. Actually, the speakers sound pretty good on this thing, but we'll talk about that a little later. All this extra cooling is super neat and all, but in all honesty, this phone already does a wonderful job managing its thermals to a point where it's not critical to performance. Without the cooler, I'm able to max out Genshin Impact at 60 FPS. The phone would certainly get warm, which is understandable when you're running a demanding game like that, but this was still comfortable to hold even after an hour of straight use. So there's a ton of power as well as some interesting quirks, but there are some genuinely good quality of life features that I wasn't expecting to see on this phone. Normally I don't talk about speakers in my phone reviews because oftentimes they don't sound that good. However, with the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, it actually has some of the best speakers I've ever heard on a phone. Play a little sound clip.
There is a surprising amount of directionality, depth, and body, especially with the lower frequencies. Add on the Aero Active Cooler with its subwoofer, and this smartphone has no right sounding this good. I also didn't think the cameras would be as good as they are. The 50 megapixel shooter isn't amazing, but it performs way better than I expected for a dedicated gaming phone. But what sold me on the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate is the software experience. I think it's pretty neat that ASUS isn't trying to reinvent the wheel with Android. When you first set up the phone, they let you choose between two core UI settings, stock Android or their light but tastefully optimized version of Android 13. In fact, there's no bloatware installed on this system whatsoever. ASUS does have their ROG Armory Crate app installed on this phone, which is mainly for game optimization. But alongside this is the Game Genie overlay that runs during gameplay. You can toggle between performance modes, refresh rates, record your screen, open up apps in a pop-up window, or configure button macros. This phone, much like its predecessors from years prior, has ultrasonic touch triggers, which aim to mimic the feel of shoulder buttons. These can be mapped to anything on your screen, essentially giving you two extra thumbs to better control what's happening on screen. This is especially handy for games that don't have controller support. I've talked a lot about the positives I have with the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate, but there are a couple of downsides to keep in mind if you're considering daily driving this absolutely bonkers gaming device. Despite all the gratuitous features ASUS slapped on here, the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate does not have expandable storage. Even if this is becoming more of a common trend in the industry with phones in this price point, it's still disappointing. 512 gigs of UFS 4.0 storage offers plenty of capacity and speed for most people, but if you wield a lot of games or media, you might run into some issues in the long run. Additionally, there is no wireless charging on here, which isn't much of a big deal with a phone like this, but it's still something to note. Also, I can't stress enough how large this phone is. You'll certainly look like a happy gamer when you put it in your pocket. Is that an ROG Phone 7? ultimate in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Where are you putting this phone? Center pockets are in now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. However, most of all, I don't feel great about the price. For this entire package, the ROG Phone 7 Ultimate is one of the most expensive high-end smartphones you can buy in 2023, coming in at over $1,500. What? While I don't think ASUS is necessarily aiming for this phone to compete with flagship offerings like the Galaxy S23 Ultra, but rather more with gaming smartphones like the Xiaomi Black Shark, there is there is an argument to be made that the phone is a lie. That is the argument. There is an argument to be made that Samsung offers a more well-rounded package that's suitable for a daily driver that can certainly game, but with also better cameras and especially more long-term software support. It sucks to say, but ASUS only commits to two major Android OS upgrades and up to four years of security on its phones. That's kind of a bummer when there's $500 options that can guarantee a longer support pipeline. I know, it sucks. When you're spending over a thousand dollars on a smartphone, you shouldn't expect anything less. Now, if this package is even remotely enticing to you, I'd suggest getting the base model ROG Phone 7 at $1,000. You'll lose out on things like the cover display and this neat motorized cooling flap, but otherwise, it's the same general package without all of that extra fluff. But let me know, what do you think about this phone in the comments below? And otherwise, thanks for watching this episode of Denki Channel. Smooth. Smooth like butter.